Hey folks, I am going to teach you some of the tricks and tips that I have learned as I've taught myself how to free dive. Now a lot of people are very surprised when I tell them that they can hold their breath for three to four minutes in just two to three months of practicing. Now the key to learning how to free dive is consistency. Just like a lot of other physical activities, you've really got to condition your body to get used to it. The great thing is that you can really practice at home. So whether you want to learn how to free dive for a vacation coming up, or you live by the ocean or a lake, and you want to learn how to free dive, this video is going to give you a couple of quick tips on what you should do to start out. Before I get to those tips, make sure to subscribe and like this video. Nothing motivates me more than knowing that you enjoy this content. Okay, the first tip that I'm going to give you is a tip that I wish I would have had when I started out. And that tip is to relax. The more relaxed you are, the less oxygen your body's gonna be using in a resting state. A lot of freedivers even learn how to meditate really well so that they can use less oxygen as they're preparing for a good free dive. Okay, for the next two minutes, be sure to relax as I set this video up. Okay, we are on the paddle board again. <laughs> there are some ginormous waves. So we're kind of hugging the side of the reef here so that the waves don't hit us. But uh, we're gonna try to do some free diving. And uh, there are some massive surf waves that uh, are pretty darn fun to watch. Farrell wants to go and body surf in them, but uh, we'll have to find some smaller ones. Those are a little big for us. What do you think, fam? Good day? Gray? Good day? Should we swim with some turtles? Okay, let's do it. The water looks pretty darn clear. Excited about that. We've got some sun. And some entertaining surfing to the side of us. Okay, now that you've had a second to relax, I'm going to get on to the next tips. Freediving is all about handling the CO2 that's in your body and using the least amount of oxygen possible. So how do you use less oxygen? Well, first off, you got to relax. Second, move as little as possible. That's why you'll see a lot of freedivers with weight on their belts. That's to help them sink to the bottom without using a lot of oxygen. So when you're holding your breath, there are three main stages. The first stage your body just wants to breathe because you're used to breathing. Partly it's because you've got some CO2 that's starting to build up, but it's also just a habit. But don't worry because your body still has quite a bit of oxygen. If you push through that phase and continue holding your breath, you're gonna get to the next phase where your diaphragm starts to contract. It's really weird and it's a physical reaction that happens where the CO2 is starting to build up and your body's telling you, hey, you know, it's time to breathe. Now, there's still a lot of oxygen in your body at this point, um, but you'll, you'll start to feel uncomfortable and you'll actually see your chest compress and expand as your diaphragm is trying to force you to breathe. But you can teach your body to elongate these stages. Now, if you continue even past that stage, you get to the next stage, which is when your spleen starts to release oxygen-rich blood. A lot of freedivers experience euphoria when that oxygen-rich blood hits their brain. Now, I don't recommend anybody try to get to the third stage without help from some sort of freediving professional. Okay, so let's get back to some of the tips. Let's say that you're in the water. The first thing you want to do, again, is relax. Be breathing normally for about two full minutes. One thing that helps me is I like to count 30 breath cycles. So I inhale slowly and exhale even slower. And I count that as one. And I count all the way to 30. That will usually take me at least two minutes. Now when you are ready to dive, a lot of people have different techniques that they follow. Some will take one breath, let it out all the way, take another breath, and then dive. I actually like to just go straight into my big breath 
because I feel like the other breaths just stress me out a little bit. So let's talk about how you can take a large breath. The first thing you're gonna do is imagine that your body is a bucket and you are filling it up with air and you fill it up starting from your belly button and you go all the way into your shoulders. One of the things that changed the game for me is when I take my breath, I raise my shoulders up and it actually allows a little bit more oxygen to come in. So after taking a large breath, a lot of free divers will spit out their snorkel so that they don't have the automatic reflex of taking a breath and accidentally take a breath when they're down under the water. So in this video, you'll see me taking my snorkel out every time I dive. It's also to reduce bubbles as fish and other ocean life get spooked by bubbles. Well, it's another beautiful day. Doing some free diving here in Oahu. Family's on the paddleboard. I think Gray's gonna get in with me for a second. Do you have goggles? Okay, get some goggles too, all right? Now as Gray puts on his goggles, I'm gonna introduce to you one of the funnier terms in free diving, and that's called the duck dive. Now remember, the whole point is to conserve oxygen, and you do that by reducing your movements. So after you have taken your large breath and spit out your snorkel, you're going to want to point your body down. You do that by putting your legs above your torso. So you can see that I kind of go into a pike position and put my legs well out of the water and slip in. Now I don't have any weights, so you'll see me kicking more than I have to when I do wear weights. And that's gonna take up a lot more oxygen. Now if you watch my body, you'll see that I'm almost perfectly vertical. That's to continue pushing myself down until about 10 to 15 meters where your body stops floating. And again, go slow, relax, and you're gonna conserve a lot more oxygen. Now you'll also see that during my entire descent, I'm regulating a bunch of times. You should never really feel a lot of pressure in your sinuses. You should always be regulating and it's just slow little regulations. You should never feel a big relief of pressure because you should have already regulated. Also remember to point your head down. You'll want to look at the ground, but try not to, and your descent will go a lot smoother. Okay, I'm gonna go down, okay, buddy? Can you watch, Dad? Okay, so let's go through the steps again. First, you're gonna relax for about two minutes. Then you're gonna fill your entire belly, chest, and shoulders with air. You're gonna then spit out your snorkel and start your duck dive. Kick your legs up out of the water and slip in. Keep your head pointed down towards the water to make for an easier descent. And please continue to regulate throughout the entire dive until you reach the bottom. If at any time during your free dive, you feel too much pressure in your sinuses, do not continue. Just go up to the surface. When you're starting out, your sinuses might not be used to regulating and relieving you of that pressure. So you'll have to take it a little bit slower. Now you're gonna start feeling the CO2 building up. And so when you get to the surface, more importantly than breathing in oxygen, you need to expel all of that CO2. So focus on breathing out and then breathing in. Now I know I've told you this a million times already, but please relax. You're gonna wanna come up from your first dive and go right back down. But you need to take a break. Not only will that be safer, but it'll actually extend your next dive. The longer you allow your body to rejuvenate between each dive, the longer you'll be able to hold your breath. I usually like to rest for twice or three times as long as I was under the water for. So if you hold your breath for three minutes, you're gonna wanna rest for a good six to nine minutes. If you can hold your breath for two minutes, you're gonna wanna rest for at least four minutes. And I know being patient is hard when you know that you've got all this wildlife below you that you wanna experience. Those are the tips that I wish I would have had when I was starting out. What are some others? Comment below any tips that I missed. Also be sure to subscribe 
Nothing motivates me more than knowing you enjoy this content. And remember, please be safe out there. It's not something you're going to pick up in one day, so please be patient. If you can practice every single day and be consistent, you'll start seeing a lot of progress. I'm excited for you to start free diving. Be sure to send me any videos or content, tips, anything that has helped you learn how to free dive. It's an awesome world under there. Enjoy!